Hey everyone, I want to take a minute and make a video. So this video is actually going to be over the period of probably about two weeks. And we're going to talk about something that's been talked about a lot. It's advertised a lot. It's a product that a lot of people buy. However, for some reason, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of independent reviews on this particular product, unless it comes from somebody that got one from a vendor or supplier or contributor or something of that nature. So I thought we'd dive in to deep transmission pans. Now the truck we're going to be utilizing this on is a 1999 F250 LD. As you can tell, it's one of our work trucks. We use it to pull a trailer. It's a single axle, but it's fairly large. It is enclosed dump trailer. It weighs somewhere between 4,500 pounds empty and about 6,500 pounds full. 7,000 pounds single axle on it, well within the limits of the trailer and its capacity. So, with us, we do a lot of stop and go driving. We drive somewhere around maybe five to 600 miles per week currently. And it is all stop, go. We have some highway driving, but maybe around somewhere between 60 to 70 stops a day. On a small day, it's more like 50. On a really busy day, it's more like 70. So, with that being said, we are very fortunate because this truck has a 4R100 transmission. It's a four-speed automatic, fairly heavy-duty transmission. It's behind a 5.4 gas engine, nothing special. And it actually has a factory temperature probe in it. That temperature reading is taken between the first and second shift solenoids in the valve body. And it gives us a pretty accurate reading. We also have our trusty handy-duty temperature gun so we can confirm the actual pan readings as well or at least the surface temperature of the pan. So we've been running the truck all day long now and we've been data logging and this is our results. See if I can keep the glare off of it so you can actually see the transmission temperature there. Now if you notice our peak temperature is somewhere around 222 degrees Fahrenheit. Now for some of you guys you're gonna freak out say oh that's extremely hot. Keep in mind this is in the valve body. It's not uncommon for that temperature reading to be a little bit higher um, by about 20 to 30 degrees than the actual pan temperature. Even then, 222 degrees is not crazy hot for a transmission, especially these older four-speed automatics. Um, I've seen 4L65s on supercharged applications doing the same thing. Now, if we were not towing under these conditions, then yes, I would say it's probably a little bit on the high side. But considering we've been towing all day, it's fairly warm out here. It's probably around 60-ish degrees, so not crazy hot, but definitely a lot of pavement pounding. I would say 220 is fairly acceptable. Um, when we checked the pan temperature, the pan temperature was somewhere between 185, 195 degrees, depending on where we put the um, little laser on the infrared gun to see exactly excuse me for a second, to see exactly where the temperature reading was. And it's very interesting because the higher up on the pan, it's in the closer you get to the sump, it seems like, or the pickup, I guess I should say, it seems like the temperature actually gets a little warmer in different parts of the pan, which, okay, makes sense. So what we're going to do is we ordered a deep pan for it, it's a pretty cool pan. It's got these little vent tubes that run through it. I think the tubes are like a quarter inch or something like that. They're fairly big tubes. And it's supposed to increase the capacity, I think, by seven quarts. So that's pretty darn considerable. Also, the pan's going to sit lower, which should expose it to a little bit more airflow, especially as the truck's moving at highway speeds. So I think we will see a drop in temperatures. Now, my question is, is I think, or my conclusion that I'm going to come to preemptively is that while we're driving we're probably going to see a subtle drop in temperatures. I'm guessing maybe 20, 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, typically while we're cruising we're around 185, 190 degrees on the factory temperature. Sometimes a little closer to 200 degrees if we're going up a lot of hills. But I think we're going to see a general drop. Now with the stop and go driving which is where we do start getting to more that 220, 230 degree temperature on the factory sensor location. I think we're gonna see it probably stay around the same. It may take a little longer to get there, but I think our peak temperature will be about the same. 
We also do have a transmission cooler up on the front. It is the factory one that comes with the tow package. It's not huge, especially compared to the Super Duties, but there is another transmission cooler up front as well. Um, so we're gonna keep this kind of short because we're gonna add on to this video, which will be in just a second for you guys. But let me know in the comments what you think ahead of time. I'm really curious because a lot of the reviews I've seen from people are from like companies that either make transmission deep pans or from people that are sponsored and get a lot of free parts. I purchased this with my own money. I did not contact the company ahead of time. This is 100% my honest opinion. And I've had them on some vehicles in the past and I've never honestly done this kind of testing on it. So I'm really excited. And uh, we'll try to put a little spreadsheet up in the page here and we'll actually have the conclusion for the numbers. So once again, guys, thank you for all your time. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in a second. That my friends is a huge size difference. So this is the Dorella deep pan and you can see it has these cool little tubes that go all the way through it. And those are actually, this is a steel pan. You can actually see and they run all the way through it so the fluid can actually circulate around. Pretty nice piece. 200 bucks and really well constructed. And you can see the size difference. All right guys, I'm laying on my back here in the rain so you guys can see this. But this is the front of the pan and I'm gonna try to hold the camera as still as possible. And you can see the actual holes that run the full length of the pan. They come out the other side and they have these almost little deflectors that are supposed to actually circulate the air almost in a spiraling pattern. Um, I think that's a really good idea. It allows a little bit more heat transfer, more surface area for the air to pass over. And if you slow it down a little bit, it gives it a little bit more time to absorb that heat. Um, the install on this pan was really simple. It does have a little eighth inch uh, port if you want to add a transmission temperature gauge, of course. The uh, 4R100 has a test port you could also tap it to on the transmission. But overall, a uh, very good product. I'm gonna try to show a little bit of it. But uh, we're gonna actually get out here and do some testing once the rain stops and see how it performs. Hey everyone, thanks to the magic of technology, we are back once again. So it's been about a week since we installed the Dorelli Deep Pan. Uh, we were very fortunate, we got to put a lot of miles on it, a lot of stop and go driving, a lot of loaded driving, a lot of trailering, and a lot of highway driving. Uh, we're working on a property in North Carolina, trying to get it ready for sale. And because of that, I've been traveling back and forth. It's about 180-ish miles, maybe 150-ish miles one way. We've been towing the single axle trailer down there. The trailer's about 4,500 pounds empty. When we went down initially, we were hauling 50 boxes of flooring, um, a full set of kitchen appliances, all the tools, plus God knows what else, probably about 7,000 pounds. On the way down, the truck or the transmission temperature did not get over 205 degrees Fahrenheit. That wasn't with a lot of stop to go driving. That was a lot of highway driving, but that was still really impressive for that load. Now on the way back, it was a little bit cooler that night uh guys the transmission temperature did not get above like 180. um that being said today we're doing a bunch of stop and go driving i'm gonna let the numbers speak for themselves since we don't have so much glare pay attention to the peak numbers so that is right under or right at 200 degrees so on the same route or a route that was very similar to this we were hitting 222 degrees so I would say the pan does work, both in highway driving and stop and go driving. That's really impressive. Now this Torelli product has been really good. It was really easy to install. It was like 200 bucks shipped, came with a new pan gasket. We reused the factory um, rubber and metal reinforced gasket. Um, these Ford uh, gaskets are really good quality. A lot of people suggest reusing them. And if it ever does leak, I kept the new gasket that came with the pan. I'll be able to swap it out, no big deal. Now, capacity-wise, guys, this transmission pan, to normally change a filter on a 4R100, you would typically be probably around 8 quarts, maybe 9 quarts. Um, I think we've got about 15 quarts in the pan right now, and I need to put it on flat ground and double-check because I think we still need to 
add maybe a half a quart to one quart. Um, so probably between 15 and 16 quarts total. That's a huge capacity increase. Um, it takes a lot longer for the transmission pan to get warm, which is a good thing, especially since we're always hooked to a trailer and always towing. Pulling big hills, it seems like it doesn't heat soak nearly as bad, especially uh, down there in North Carolina. There's some spots around Greensboro and Raleigh. I mean, we're running 75 miles an hour because it's 70 mile an hour speed limit. And literally, if you're not running 75, you're getting run over. Uh, going up and down those hills, pulling those hills, sometimes an overdrive. It works. Um, the Dorelli pans, they are a stamp steel pan. That's why they are a little cheaper. Like I said, 200 bucks. They have a really nice finish on them. They come with um, a, a eighth inch pro port for if you're going to run a transmission temperature sensor. They come with a magnetic uh, drain pan plug. Everything you need to install, really good instructions. Don't quote me on what we torqued the pan spec to. I want to say it was around 130 inch pounds because I think the factory spec is somewhere between 12 and 14 foot pounds, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm off on that, leave it in the comments. But overall, great product. Okay, really well boxed, instructions, wrapped. Cannot stress this product enough, guys. I mean, for 200 bucks, the quality was absolutely phenomenal. It does hang down a little bit low now, and I mean, you're adding seven to eight quarts of capacity, so that's to be expected. Probably on a Super Duty, it wouldn't be such a big deal, but this is an F-250 light duty, so it's basically an F-150 body slash frame with the 4R100 transmission and the 10 and a quarter rear end. So I think in a Super Duty, it might be tucked up in there just a little bit more. It's still not terrible. It's sitting about even with the cross member. We don't off-road this truck. This is a work truck. We use in the field sometimes, but realistically for me to smack that pan on something, I would probably have to be doing something I really wasn't supposed to. And then it's also a steel pan. So odds are it probably would just get bent up a little bit. Probably would not be a structural failure or broken in half. So that's the good news. When we decide to make this video, the big thing was, is I saw hundreds of install videos on YouTube. I did not see very many independent review videos. Um, there were some review videos basically made by manufacturers of products. And while I feel those are very insightful, it's still not the same thing as somebody going out and spending their money and doing the review, which is what we've done here. I'm not sponsored by these products. I'm not... Dorelli did not give me a discount on this pan. There's nothing shady going on here. I bought this with my money, tested it here, and these are the results that we're finding. So I was really surprised though. I thought the pan would function really well on highway, but probably be about the same with stop and go driving. I guess maybe because the added capacity, so much more volume, and because the truck, the pan does sit so a little bit lower. I guess just being able to get that extra airflow around the pan did also drop our stop and go driving temperatures. Now we're gonna continue to monitor this. You know, we data log pretty much constantly. We use it all the time, hooked to the OBD2 port, just to make sure that none of our temperatures spike. It just helps us get ahead of any potential problems we might have. Um, eventually I do wanna add a transmission temperature uh, gauge to the truck that way I can monitor it without constantly have the X4 hooked to the uh, OBD2 port but that'll be down the road so guys once again Dorelli great product you guys did awesome bang for buck it did exactly what it said it was going to do my hat's off to you great job if you like these videos continue to like share subscribe thank you guys so much for everything for making these videos possible for inspiring me to continue to make them Remember, times are hard right now all the way around. Try to be patient with your neighbors, your friends, your in-laws. Everybody's stressed right now. Just try to take a minute and be nicer to everybody. Anyway, y'all have a great day. As always, all the way.